Welcome to an edition of Boxing Inform, your host, The Islander, and this is the results show, week ending January the 25th. All right, I'm going to do things a little bit in reverse. Let's do the schedule for this week because it kind of stinks anyway, and then we'll spend a lot of time, all 10 minutes and probably 45 seconds we have on uh, the results from last week. This coming week on the uh, 31st, which is next Saturday, uh, two cards, different parts of the world, Masatlan, Mexico, uh, Koki Kamita is taking on Everett Bricino, if I'm pronouncing that correct, no TV. It's a 12 round, 112 pound IBF flyweight eliminator. I guess uh, he, Koki Kamita wins this fight, he gets a fight against Nonito Donaire, um, which I don't think is a good idea for him anyway. Uh, but he, he should win. And one of the things to point out is that this is a real good thing um, that Kamita's people are doing, having him fight on this side of the world to get accustomed to it, because they th I think they believe that he's going to be a big star. Uh, eventually, and, and that's been the rage around him. On the 31st also in Cebu, Philippines, isn't that supposed to be Cebu City, if I'm not mistaken? Anyway, neither here nor there. Michael Katsidis taking on Angel Hugo Ramirez in a 12-round lightweight fight. Uh, I don't know, it's probably an eliminator for something or other. But uh, I'm going with Kamita and Katsidis pretty easy in these fights. On the 30th, on Friday, moving backwards, in Montreal, ESPN2, the vacant IBF 140-pound title, which was vacated when Paulie Malagi decided to step up against Ricky Hatton, is going to be contested in which local favorite Herman Naguju, who has failed in two other times in which he stepped up, stepped up uh, in competition, although most will agree he should have been awarded both fights, one against Jose Luis Castillo and the other one against Paulie Malagi, which I kind of thought he outworked Malagi myself, uh, has taken on former titleist Juan Urango, power-punching Southpaw Colombian. Not to spend all that much time on this, it's going to be an interesting fight, and it's going to be a good fight. I think it's going to be a good fight, provided it doesn't end in some type of controversy. Conventional wisdom would tell you that Naguju has the edge, being at home, being a busier fighter in this nap, but here's what I get out of this. He fights in the pocket and fights in the, the range of, or I should say within range of firepower. There's going to be some time along that fight in which Juan Urango lands with power and I kind of am curious to see what happens when that does happen. I, uh, my heart, I guess my mind is telling me Ngoju, but my gut's telling me Urango's going to crack him with something sooner or later. Uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to go with Urango, I'm going to go out on a limb and go with Urango in this fight. All right. Moving along, uh, a couple things in the news. For those of you who are interested, uh, Larry Merchant, it's been reported, uh, his, he had a contract through 2009, two-year contract with a two-year option at HBO's discretion, supposedly according to Dan Raphael, HBO has picked up those other two years, so he will be with us until 2011. Way to go, Larry. All right, the on-again, off-again thing. Supposedly, the fight between Ricky Hatton and Manny Pacquiao is on for May 2nd. At least that's what Bob Arum is reporting, that Pacquiao and his people have signed the contract. Richard Schaefer, uh, Schaefer has, hand, I guess, either had hand-delivered or delivered the, the signed document to Ricky Hatton and Ray Hatton, and I guess there's a little bit of formalities being uh, done here. Um, what were Ricky Hatton's options if the fight fell through? Let me go over them, because they don't sound too good to me. The Juan Manuel Marquez, uh, Juan Diaz winner. Aren't those guys lightweights? Not a big option. Oscar De La Hoya fighting against Hatton in the UK. Possible, but I don't. that ain't that great of an option compared to fighting Pacquiao. Floyd Mayweather fighting a rematch with Hatton in the UK. Don't think Floyd's interested in that. Uh, not going to make as much money as last time, or maybe he would, I don't know. The options weren't that great. They had to get this done. All right, moving along to the results really uh, quickly. Jesus Jimenez scored a fourth round TKO over Alejandro Hernandez in Mexico City on the Telemundo card back on the 23rd in the uh, flyweight division. Uh, on the 24th, a little bit of a surprise to me in Rissan, Germany, and it shouldn't be. Marco Huck, who I think his only loss was to Steve Cunningham uh, in a give and take battle, he stopped in the 12th round of the uh, title bid, uh, scored a convincing third round TKO over Jeffrey Batello of Belgium. Not exactly a hot bid for boxing. And that brings us to the 24th at the Staples Center. Antonio Margarito defending his title against Shane Mosley. All right, I'm sure I'm going to get myself into trouble with a lot of what I'm about to say. So let me just tell you how I view this. 
I think that from what I saw, it's a great win for Shane Mosley, and I think the result was definitely decisive, it was clean, and my congratulations to him, because it's always good to see one of the good guys in boxing win a fight like this. I mean, my hat's off to Shane Mosley, and I wish and hope the best for you that you will get a fight with Mayweather, or you will get a fight with Pacquiao or Hatton or whatever. Um, does anybody feel like I do, first question of the week, that Antonio Margarito didn't even look like he showed up for this fight? His mind, his body, he was just kind of going through the motions, sort of. Um, I don't know what the deal is. I get the kind of feeling that he really didn't want this fight to begin with. Um, he balked at the money at first and finally reluctantly accepted it. Uh, I just, I, I don't think the fight at all interested him, and it, it sure looked like it in his performance. Now, the Mosley game plan. Question number two of the week. Are the means, do the means of winning, or the path taken to winning, those means always justify the end. Now, I'm telling you that the end result was, justi was justification, and it's something we should take our hats off to, because it was a career-defining win for the ages for Mosley. But the means and the way he got there, I'm starting to question, because I, you know, some many of you have made, sent me messages and made comments that he used the uh, Bernard Hopkins mold of clinching and this and that. I don't know whether Margarito's people went to Raul Caiz, was that, was that the referee? Well, whoever the referee was, and asked him, let them fight on the inside. And in the end, that kind of backfired on the Margarito people because Mosley was holding whenever they got in close and trying to walk, and he did walk uh, Margarito backwards. I think Margarito was waiting for them to be separated because the thing is that the whole idea of this was Mosley pop shot his way on the outside and his way in, and then locking up Margarito. For me, the first six rounds of the fight were not something that I would cl classify as a great fight, or even a really good fight for that matter. Uh, and I didn't think this was a great fight. I think it was a great win for, Mo for Mosley. Um, on top of that, I think that, uh, you know, the style that Mosley used, although exciting with, you know, the slashing right hands, I think it was uh, too much of Bernard Hopkins, but I'll take the win is what I'm saying. Uh, I'll take the result, but I will not, let's put it this way, if this fight went the distance and it went 12 rounds and Mosley won a unanimous decision, I would say, you know what, after watching what I watched, I don't want to see this again, because if you noticed, we're getting blown away by the result again, as opposed to what got to that result, and you know, one, I think Margarito, his head was not there, his body wasn't there, and two, Mosley employed a style that I've never seen him employ before, and I don't particularly like it, but I do like the way he blew away Margarito at the end, and put an emphatic ending to the fight. Now, a couple of other things. Um, Ring Warrior 12, you bring this to, to note, and that is, how many of you out there will buy any crap that Jim Lampley says? I'm not disputing that there was some type of a uh, gauze or a wrap in Margarito's hand wraps that when wet might harden. I'm not disputing that. What I'm disputing is, even Emmanuel Stewart tried to put a clamp down on this asinine notion that Margarito's been doing this all along. You know why? Because Jim Lampley is an HBO fighter's nut hugger, is what he is. You think about this. HBO has a stake in Mosley. They always have. HBO has a stake in Cotto. They're both English-speaking fighters. They would rather have them on the air than Margarito. That's just my opinion, and I'm entitled to it. Number two is, how asinine would it be to imagine, and Emmanuel Stewart tried to say this, how asinine would it be to imagine that Miguel Cotto's uncle or father or whoever was standing in Margarito's locker room and allowing this to go on? There's always a person from one camp in the other fighter's dressing room to watch the hands be wrapped. Always. And I just think that this whole thing was a ploy by Nazim Richardson and, and Hopkins people to try to throw Margarito's mind off in this and made him wrap his hands three times. Who knows what it was? We're talking about cloth is what we're talking about. We're not talking about a piece of plastic, which I think is what Lampley said at the end of the show where Emmanuel Stewart's playing it down going, there's no way this has been going on forever. And for those of you who think that Cotto got damaged and wronged, wrongo. If he did, it's his own corner's fault, and I'm not saying he did.
So, I, I mean, don't take this away from Margarito, I mean, in his past fights. After all, it was a punch to the midsection that made uh, Kermit Cintron succumb. Alright, in any event, uh, that's going to be about it for this show. Keep sending... Oh, by the way, you want to know why the shows aren't longer? I've got to get more videos up, and there's got to be thousands and thousands of views in order for me to get that partnership thing back again. Um, but again, a great win for uh, Shane Mosley, and also one other thing. Does anybody went, know where the user code, one of my subscribers on a channel owner called Mexican Fighters went? All of a sudden, his count is suspended and disappeared. That's going to be it, folks. Catch me next week on Boxing Info. Thanks.